Greetings, everyone. Welcome to High Strangeness in Alaska. My apologies for not doing a full dedicated Bigfoot video, but as you know, 10, 15% of the time I do high strangeness and other cryptids and UFOs, paranormal, that kind of thing. And I could not resist but to do an episode on the jellyfish UFO. And I just have to say it mainly because the, the jellyfish UFOs have been around a long time, but I was there during a sighting in 2007. It was November of 2007. Funny enough, it was in the Chugach Mountain Pass once again where I just filmed that last UFO and my ex-wife saw a jellyfish UFO. It was the same size, roughly a meter long, smaller, not a huge craft, about 100 feet off the highway and I was driving so I did not get a good look at it. It was in a blizzard and it was very windy there was snow and there was this gleaming moving thing above the highway and I slowed down when I looked at it to me it looked like a flock of seagulls if you will moving around it looked like a little bunch of glowing birds constantly moving which uh, that goes in line with the scales that transform and have this cloaking system. We'll talk about that, but that's what I saw, but I was just kind of trying to keep my eye on the road in this blizzard and looking up at it for a second. And finally, I, um, you know, she wanted to stop and get out. I was like, no, no, that's scary. Let's just, and I just pressed forward. But she said it was a glowing UFO jellyfish hovering above the highway. So uh, I remember telling my professors in Santa Fe, New Mexico, I was going to this crazy, uh, new age school there and I remember telling them about it and and I just kind of forgot about it until it made the headlines last week jellyfish UFO now big shout out to Jeremy Corbell George Knapp of course he's one of my heroes listening to him for decades on coast to coast AM they broke this story and it is obviously from a uh, military surveillance camera. You can tell the FLIR, you can tell the IR. It was in the sky, it, it was surveillance. Nobody else can just throw a drone up and make it look like that. It had the tracking, it had everything. And funny enough, the Pentagon is not denying it, but they are saying nothing about it. They're figuring out what they are going to say because this is a, a UAP. Now, a bunch of different things about it, the, the qualities that it had. So um, the locals in Iraq there, so this was over a US base in Iraq uh, a good number of years ago, and uh, everybody was freaking out about it. It got leaked to Jeremy and stuff, but at the time, everybody was freaking out about it, and they were watching it you know, on live stream, and then they kept it in the base. They were all watching it. The locals, when they were asked about it, they called it a ghost and said it had always been there. They're, they had been reporting it for a 100 years. So really interesting. Um, also, uh, they s described it with almost scales that would have these morphing capabilities. And I did a illustration of it. So shout out to Rob Roy Menzies. He's been inspiring me. He is a illustrator. Uh, owner of the Bigfoot Art Gallery. He does lots of illustrations of UFOs and paranormal. I'm throwing some of those pictures up here, but uh, just in being inspired by him and Alex Petikoff, I got to meet him this last summer, and you know, he's featuring me again on Small Town Monsters, so I'm super excited about that, but he kind of taught me to have a little investigation kit, keep a journal, and I have been keeping a journal so far um, over the last six months of all my investigations. And so I did an illustration based on our personal uh, experience that, that we had in 2007 with this jellyfish UFO and the footage that came out. And so I used my, my artistic uh, license and made the scales on it, but I'll show a close up of the picture. But really interesting how uh, it would not show up I believe the report said it would not show up on infrared and, and the naked eye, it was invisible. People weren't seeing them, but when they got it on thermal, they saw it. And that's why you turn it, you see it turn from white hot to very dark. And it is, that's what tells me 
it is not a conventional drone just covered, draped with a blanket because uh, without that, um, I would have looked at that and I said, well, you know, it's not going super fast. I think that it's probably a drone that has been covered with like a, ba a wire basket. They draped a blanket. They got some little poles sticking out of the bottom and um, it's just a drone. It's a DJI drone somebody's flying. But no, no drone. They, they would have to have a torch in there and then some kind of cooling system to make those scales go from white hot to very cold in these rapid transformations. And that's what we we're seeing with the Tic Tac video, that UAP that came out roughly three years ago when it was uh, on FLIR on the thermal showing that... Uh, you know, the, uh, they, they couldn't understand, you know, it was rotating against the wind going very fast. And then it was making these transitions of heat signatures and cooling off and getting white hot. And it was just really strange. That's what this thing is doing, except this thing looked totally different. It was interesting on the Tic Tac, did have that one antenna on the side. So really fascinating, but I'm here to say that this is nothing new. I do believe that this is alien tech. Uh, whether someone else is controlling it or not, and shame on the scientists that keep coming out and say, oh, they're drones from China. China doesn't have anything like this. We don't have anything like this. Look, uh, whatever top secret stuff uh, the government has, it's typically 20 years above conventional technology. They don't have uh, gravitational electromagnetic engines yet. Yes, they do have some ion engines for spacecraft, but that's shooting out one little ion at a time um, and slowly moving the spacecraft. They don't have anything in the Earth's atmosphere that can manipulate gravity, that can ma manipulate electromagnetic forces and just, you know, turn on a dime, change its uh, polarity, change its temperature, move around like that. We don't have anything like that. So those scientists are either just total jerks or they're complete plants throwing out disinformation that are saying that UFO enthusiasts are whacked and this is obviously a Chinese drone because it is not. Nobody has technology like this. So just fascinating how it was doing that. Also super fascinating was the shape of it. Now it is shaped like a jellyfish and they said that and you can see the mechanical tendrils. I kind of um, showed that in my illustration here coming down. And so this is one of my best resources, Saucers of the North by Jesse Desmond, thankfully uh, hooking up with Beans Baxter and all the boys hooking up with Alex Petikoff, Rob Roy Menzies. I have been able to connect with Jesse. I talk to her sometimes and I have read this twice. I'm reading it a third time and now I'm going back and making notes with it because it is the only uh, compendium. It's, it's uh, got all most of the UFO sightings listed throughout the years in chronological order that have happened in Alaska. Alaska is a hot spot, guys. Alaska is like New Mexico on steroids. We've got such a rural population that's spread out, whether it's just hundreds of miles and no people. It's a perfect place for aliens to come down and mess around. And we've got all these curious crafts, tons of glowing orbs and classic saucers, but we've got diamond shape UFOs, fireballs, UFOs that are split into three and come back together, um, rectangular UFOs, cigar UFOs, all kinds of different colors. It's all in this book. And so I remember something like a jellyfish. And so I went through it and there was a couple that I found. One was like a ice cream cone shape, which uh, very similar to the jellyfish, but this one was amazing. So this sighting was in February 23rd, 2000. Um, let's see. Okay, this this was the ice cream cone one. So this this one was kind of similar. A mother saw it after her daughter pointed it out to her. This is on page 135. I have listed this book on my Amazon storefront. I do suggest you buy it. Uh, it traveled in a southwestern direction, slower than a jet, but still fast. The mother noted that the craft was solid white except for the tail end, which appeared somewhat transparent. The shape of a craft was like a cone with a rounded front, and the tail didn't come to a complete point. So that is very similar to this jellyfish UFO 
rounded top cone, but the, it kind of trails off and you got these tendrils and it's not a complete point. So it could be something very interesting. Now, here's the big one on page 77. This is October 28th, 1977. So that's why I'm saying this, these jellyfish are nothing new. So uh, this is in Huna, uh, city police officer. So we've got a trained professional law enforcement um, was checking the airport around 11.30 p.m. Um, and he saw this craft hovering above the runway and its white light blinked off. The officer could see the silhouette of the craft in the moonlight. It looked like an upside down funnel where a dome with a dome where the spout would be. The bottom of the craft had half a dozen pipes or tubes hanging down 15 to 20 feet below the craft, some bent and some straight. So this one's a lot bigger than the one in Iraq. That one was like roughly a meter and a half, maybe a meter around. This one was a lot bigger, but round top, tendrils, pipes, and that's what we're seeing with this one that was spotted in Iraq. Just fascinating. This one was huge, and uh, the officer thought it looked something similar to the Jupiter II from the 1960s series Lost in Space. So not totally like the jellyfish UFO, but the pipes hanging down, very similar, not perfectly uniform, some bent to the side, and that is what we were seeing on this. Now, the last thing, the UFO reportedly, you see on one of the clips it disappears, but they have better footage, um, the soldiers are saying, um, and it, this is obviously legit, guys, because that's coming from a government. If anybody who knows anything about government surveillance footage knows that that is legit footage. So it went underwater, and we've got lots of stories, even in Saucers of the North by Jesse Desmond, Alaska stories of UAPs going underwater, moving very fast, getting sonar on them, eyewitness reports of them coming in and out of the water. My favorite story growing up, and I wish I could find one of these paintings, I worked at the practice museum uh, as a teenager and this woman did a giant uh, gallery thing where she brought in all her paintings because the head of the Kachemak Bay at that time was a hot spot for UFOs and she did these paintings of these giant mothership UFOs the size of aircraft carriers that were glowing discs coming out of Kachemak Bay, coming out of the water, flying into the air, hovering above the bay, the cosmic hamlet by the sea. It was amazing. And uh, if anybody knows about those paintings, please, please let me know because I want to purchase one eventually. So anyways, that's what I have to say about the jellyfish UFO. We are living in crazy times. This is bizarro, upside down world. The Pentagon is not denying it, but they're not saying anything at this time. There's closed... Uh, congressional meetings where congressmen are demanding to talk about it and a lot of the politicians are voting to not release any information to the public which is that's troublesome I, I don't like that but it's gonna come out and it's slowly coming out um, just an amazing time to be a UFO researcher and I am having a blast let me know what you guys think please check out Rob Roy Menzies please check out small town monsters please check out beans Baxter they all have you YouTube channels. Um, Alex Petikoff has got his personal YouTube channel. He does a lot of paranormal research. And check out Saucers of the North by Jesse Desmond, uh, which is probably, like I said, one of the best tools you can use uh, researching UFOs in Alaska because it's all there. So thank you. Shout out to Joe Mo and all my patrons. Every Sunday morning, he gets his kids out around the tube and for their Sunday morning cartoon Bigfoot goodness from Chuke. I'm going to keep putting out Sunday morning Bigfoot and paranormal videos. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.